Hello, I am Bailey, and I am a high-level CS player that's trying to go pro. And while looking for every piece of competitive advantage I can get, I've stumbled across way too many. The Ultimate CS2 Settings Guide 2025 CS2 Dramatically Increased Performance Counter-Strike 2 FPS Full Game The only PC optimization guide you'll ever need. And while some of them are actually useful, the vast majority are completely trash and just cover the same topics over and over again. My plan with this video is, first of all, to show you my own optimized CS2 settings, but also explain why I use them and how you can tweak them to find your own sweet spot. And finally stop crying about someone killing you because of your resolution. Also, I'll show you my NVIDIA settings and the third-party software I use that actually helps with performance. Alright, let's go! So the first thing you'll find after clicking on the settings icon are video settings. And the most important lesson here, there are no right or wrong answers. I know that the majority of CS players use 4x3 stretched, but that doesn't mean you have to as well. Personally, I also use 4x3 stretched 1920 by 1440 so I am gladly taking the full advantage of my lovely 1440p monitor. But any of those options are good. Well, actually, except for these. Please, just don't use them. Now, the only reason I play 4x3 is because of FPS. Whenever I play CS, I'm also streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Might as well drop a follow and subscribe if you like watching high-level gameplay. I'd really appreciate it, thank you. And on top of that, I also record the game. And all of that combined does take a hit on frames and smoothness of CS2 and especially with my 480Hz monitor, I need every frame I can get, alright? But deep inside my heart, I actually prefer 16x9 and I feel better and more in control on it. If you're a newer player debating whether to switch to 4x3 because your favorite pro uses it or stick with native because it feels better, I would recommend you just stay native. But like you'll see with other settings as well, just set it as you like, get comfortable on the resolution and don't overthink it. Now, full screen versus full screen windowed. I know that CS had an update where full screen windowed became viable and it is said to offer no latency increase at all, but for me, every time I tried it, there were still more stutters than on full screen exclusive. And I'm not sure if it's placebo or not, but my mouse input feels a little slower. So that's why I would recommend using full screen exclusive. There really is no benefit to using full screen windowed unless you want to alt tap quicker to doom scroll while you're dead. But maybe don't do that. Moving on to refresh rate, please don't be like LeBron and just choose the highest one available. Alright, thank you very much. And lastly, brightness is a setting you should experiment with on your own. Back in CSGO, there used to be the setting called color mode and you could either have it on computer monitor or television. The difference between the two was the gamma. Television setting had more gamma and the colors looked a little more washed out. But for some reason, Young Bailey liked it and that's why I play with a little higher brightness than usual of 115%. Now the advanced tab is definitely more interesting. Boost player contrast is enabled for me, but there is no real difference as far as I'm concerned. Now when it comes to these settings, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the most important part of the whole video. I've tried a lot of combinations here. My most popular TikTok is about setting FPS max 0, disabling reflex and capping your FPS in the Nvidia control panel and this is the setting that I've been using the longest. But as I'm recording this video, literally yesterday CS2 Kitchen showed that this is indeed not the optimal setting to use when it comes to CS2. So I decided to give Reflex another shot and after playing with it for a while, it seems pretty legit. So right now I'm using Reflex on Plus Boost. If you're on AMD GPU, probably just use Anti-Lag. But as you can see, the quote-unquote best setting here is very fluid. I've tried Dash No Reflex, Reflex Disabled, Enabled, Enabled Plus Boost, also combining G-Sync with V-Sync. And some of those settings performed okay, some performed really badly and some performed really well. If you want more in-depth information about Reflex, I highly recommend watching CS2 Kitchen's videos. This guy is super knowledgeable and really knows what he's talking about. I'll link his video in the description, but ultimately, this is about trial and error and seeing how your setup responds to different combinations of reflex. Now these settings are pretty much agreed upon as the best settings for FPS, especially the global shadow quality. Yes, you can set this to low and then set dynamic shadows to all and enjoy extra FPS while also seeing enemies shadows. One thing I would say is you can change multi-sampling from MSAA to CMAA if you're really struggling with FPS, but at the same time, MSAA 2x gives me better 1% lows than CMAA 2, so it looks better and performs better. Win-win overall. When it comes to HUD adjustment, if you're playing on anything else here, you're a freak. I'm sorry, I bought the whole monitor, I'm gonna use the whole monitor, okay? Simple as that. 
Now when it comes to the audio tab, my settings here are set to default, except for my in-game volume, which is always on 65% during the round. The reason for all this is pretty simple. I don't really like the implementation of EQ in CS. I mean look, you only have 3 profiles, know absolutely no details about them and it doesn't let you customize anything. Is this thing really supposed to help you like hear footsteps better? Mm, I don't think so. So that's why I've been using something that actually makes me hear footsteps better and I'm sure it will help you out too. Let me tell you about today's sponsor, Sonar, a completely free audio software from SteelSeries. Its advanced parametric EQ lets you fine-tune your sound so you hear everything with insane accuracy. You can even separate game audio from voice chat for a perfectly balanced soundscape. And if your mic sounds like total garbage, Sonar also got you covered. And yes, it works with any headset. Sonar even comes with presets made with pro players, so you don't need to waste hours tweaking settings. Just pick your game of choice and you're done. I've been testing it in CS2 and honestly, the difference is actually noticeable. Wait, this is insane. What? With Sonar, there's no excuse for missing a sound cue. Download it right now using my link in the description and start experimenting. And if you're looking to upgrade your setup too, use code BILY20 for 20% of everything on the SteelSeries website. Big thanks to SteelSeries for sponsoring this video and now let's continue with my settings. One thing you might want to change though in the audio tab is to put everything on 0% except for the 10 second warning. But the thing is, I'm not sure if it even matters anymore, since bomb sound is different when the timer is at 10 seconds or lower. So this is just something I said long time ago and just forgot to be honest. And here everything is on default. Again, check out Sonar if you truly want better sound for CS2. When it comes to the game tab, everything here is irrelevant, apart from the buffering to smooth over packet loss. If you've got really bad internet, I've read that setting it to either of these two options might help, but a better option would be to just get better internet. Thanks Mr. Obvious. HUD scale is at the lowest setting, when it's any higher then it distracts me from the actual gameplay. My HUD color is bright blue, but that's only because my favorite color is bright blue, so you can just pick your own favorite too and enjoy plus 100 ELO instantly, or at the very least just slightly more enjoyable gameplay. I prefer having profile pictures of people rather than large player count as well. Show team ID is important though. You want to have this on everything, so you know exactly what's happening around the map with your teammates. If they're low, what weapon they have and stuff like that so you can react accordingly. Here everything else is whatever, except for animated avatars. It pisses me off when I can see them moving around when I play and it's yet another distraction, so I recommend turning that off as well. Oh and maybe also mute enemy team. I highly recommend having it on, there really is no benefit to getting tilted by your enemies through some stupid comments, just don't type to these losers at all. I know that my great friend Max loves detaching his silencer from the M4, whatever that means. But here's the message to you Max, please put it to disabled. This setting is completely flippin useless. When it comes to my view model, these are my values. The only thing I ever change here is the Y value. Sometimes I have it on minus 2, sometimes on 0 and sometimes on 2. It's really whatever, but the X and Z values always stay the same. And yes, right hand for me. Left hand feels super awkward, but yeah, this is also just preference. First person tracers, I believe they really help with spray control and to notice where your bullets are going, so just set it to enabled. Now when it comes to radar. I've had these settings for as long as I can remember. I know a lot of people use binds to zoom in and zoom out whenever they want, which is probably the better option by the way, but to be honest, I just couldn't care less about it. I know everything that happens on the map with my current settings and whenever I need to, I just use tab to show the whole radar, so not having binds doesn't really screw me over. That said, if you want to be as optimized as you can, I would look into some tutorial that will help you do that. I'll definitely link one in the description of this video. Now here is the juicy part y'all. Crosser is in my opinion literally the only thing you can switch consistently and it won't mess with your gameplay or improvement. I've got three crossers that I switch between. The first one is the donk crosser or the meta crosser, call it whatever you want. This one is small and thick. I call the second one the plus crosser because, well, it looks like a plus. This one is thick with no gap and the last one is the normal crosser, I don't know. 
It's not thick, but it has a bigger gap. If any of these look nice to you and you want to use them, I have them posted alongside all the settings you'll see in this video on my Discord. The link to join there will be also in the description. Grenade lineups are useless and distracting in my opinion, so I have them off. Oh geez, damage prediction. Um, even when you have good internet connection, it still somehow manages to screw you over every single time, so just disable everything. And when it comes to telemetry, I think it's sometimes nice to have it on, to notice if it's your internet tweaking or your FPS, so if you're trying to diagnose what's wrong with your setup, this is the thing to use. And finally, mouse and keyboard. Let me tell you that I've tried a lot of sensitivities in my life, and I found that I play best at 720 to 800 eDPI, with eDPI being your in-game sensitivity times your DPI. That's why I currently play at 0.25 at 3200 DPI. Why 3200 DPI? Well, it's because the sensor latency is lower the higher DPI you select. I'm not even sure if it's noticeable to a human being, but hey, lower latency is lower latency and it's just a few clicks and it's for free. Let me just tell you straight up that you won't play like Donk if you set Donk's sensitivity and neither will you play like me if you set my sensitivity. You need to experiment here and find your own sweet spot and match it to your playstyle. I've got a video on my channel covering this topic more in depth, so if you're always overthinking your sense, watch it and I promise you'll stop crashing out over it. I use the OP18K and I've set 4000Hz polling rate on it. This mouse is wired, so I can get away with it, but if you're using a wireless mouse, I would probably go lower to 2000Hz or 1000Hz to avoid charging my mouse every day. The difference in polling rate really isn't worth it. For my keyboard settings, I use 0.7mm actuation point and surprisingly, no rapid trigger as of recently. I know that might sound stupid because rapid trigger just seems like a feature with no downside to it, but I don't know, my counter strafes feel clean AF without it, and they didn't feel that good with rapid trigger enabled. Maybe the implementation of rapid trigger on my Fun60 Ultra is worse than in other keyboards? I'm not sure, but for now, I've got it turned off. Now I just want to quickly show you my movement keys. And here might also be the most controversial part of the video, of my settings and my career. I don't use the scroll wheel to jump. <gasps> Almost everyone, if not actually everyone on the pro scene, uses scroll wheel to jump and then their keyboard to shuffle between nades, weapons, etc. But I don't. I use my scroll wheel to switch to a knife, pull out my nades and everything else it was created to do. I'm only following the rules here, okay? Don't be mad at me. Am I missing out on some bunny hops? Maybe, yeah. But how do you explain this one then? Oh my god, that was so sick! <laughs> Call me a space bar daddy from now, alright? But all jokes aside, shuffling your nades with scroll wheel is definitely not an efficient method. But I have played this game for more than 7000 hours and always used this setting, so, you know, I can access every nade just based off my muscle memory with it. But for newer players, 100% you have to bind them to something so you can pull them out instantly. My suggestions are those buttons on your keyboard or even using the side buttons on your mouse. You can create easy binds with this side, the link will be also in the description, so you can just experiment. And if you're curious, this is my auto-exec file with literally three binds in it. Opening my console, a bind to turn left whenever I press T, don't ask why, and then L to change my volume to either 0 or 0.65. This one is actually useful if you don't want to hear your teammates battle it out on the voice chat while you're dead. And no, you don't need a jump throw bind anymore. Wake up, grandpa, it's not CSGO anymore. Before I show you my NVIDIA settings, here are my launch options, or should I say launch option, because there's only one. This just allows me to capture the game on OBS. So the last part of this video will be about the third party software I use that helps with performance. You got to know already the first one, which is Sonar, a literal game changer if you want the best audio possible for CS2. My setting here is CS2 by face. You can literally just search it up, click it and it's already enabled. So enjoy better sound quality in CS2 almost instantly. Also, I definitely recommend using Process Lasso. Here you can set priority class, GPU priority, CPU affinity, pretty much everything that you want. I play on the 7800X3D and in CS2 I have SMT and Core 0 disabled. This setting has given me the best benchmark result. 
MSI Afterburner is amazing too. I overclocked my GPU, so if you want extra performance from your graphics card, type in YouTube either Undervolt or Overclock, and then your GPU, there's for sure a guide for that. Just make sure you don't tweak it too hard so it crashes as you're gaming. And lastly, the Nvidia control panel. Here are all of my settings. And I'm pretty sure you need these settings to play on a stretched resolution. And that's it, the rest is on default. So these were all my settings. Please remember that there is no one single perfect config that will give you the edge over your opponents. It's way more productive to fine tune your skill rather than settings. And if you want to do just that, this channel is exactly where you want to be. Thank you so much for watching until the end, I really hope I provided you with at least some value. If I did, please consider subscribing and as always, keep grinding.